go home and double your prices. You're going to lose half your customers, but you're going to make the same money at the end of the day. And look at all that free time you're going to have. So you can either advertise or go fishing, but you're going to make the same profit. So, hey, what's up, guys? I'm here with Gerald Best. Gerald is the owner of Roman Roof Cleaning and Roof King Products out in Texas. And he is one of the most transparent, no bullshit dudes you'll find in this industry. And he offers a very interesting perspective in business. So it's great to have you on today, Gerald. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. So first thing I'd like to hop into, if you don't mind, kind of just taking me back and running me through your story. Well, I, uh, I started out young. My father owned a business. And so uh, I worked for him when I first started, but he ended up wanting to make his business smaller. So uh, I decided to open up an old change business. I was 17, opened it up, decided that uh, that was miserable. I had it for about a year. I said I'd never own another business in my life. <laughs> uh, went to work for another guy and then uh, it eventually went back to my father. He, he uh, opened up another, it was an automotive repair shop and I started running it for him. And, and I learned there that, uh, you know, that's, that's the place to be is, is in the front and uh, running and owning the business. And so from there, we just, uh, I ended up having a uh, five location auto repair business. And then through the years, just uh, alongside of that one, I would start a business and build it up a little bit, sell it. Uh, there were some of them I, I, I opened that I planned on keeping, but just ended up selling. Uh, but uh, through that time, and I'm sure, I guess you've seen some of my story, uh, when we had the the five locations that was, that was really more, uh, to, to the end of my, my growth spurt. We had, I had tons of businesses till then. And then I had, uh, when I'd done that, I actually got too, a little too big for my britches, ended up going broke. Uh, but, and that's one reason I'm not real big on having multiple locations unless you have the personality for it. Uh, but, uh, but then after that, uh, I just had, I went broke, but I still kept one location. So I didn't go completely broke, but just, just almost, but kept the one location. I had a manager there, so I didn't have to work every day. So that's when I started looking into, uh, I, honestly, my roof got dirty. And so I started researching how to clean it. And I'm just one of those guys, if somebody else can do it, I can do it. And so I said, you know, this is, there's a need here for that. There's not many people that do it. And uh, so I cleaned my roof, worked out good. A few days later, I just put ads in the paper. Hey, I clean roofs, and then uh, and then we we're off to the races. Uh, and then, just like anything I do, I just dive head deep and uh, just started growing it. Uh, like the Roof King products, there really wasn't uh, a good, uh, dependable system out there to spray. And so uh, I built something for me, and it worked out great. And so I thought, well, you know, just again, there was a need. So uh, that's when I started building the, building the equipment and selling that to the to the industry. Uh, and then with the classes, kind of the same thing. I've seen so many people destroying roofs and causing issues and, and begging for somebody to, to open up the door and help them learn. And so uh, that's the reason we started doing the school and teaching. And, uh, and that's, that's where I'm at. That's awesome. So two interesting things you pointed on. Um, first being that when you first got started, um, I guess in the entrepreneurial space, um, you're running your own business, said you're never going to do it again got a job and then said the same thing, never going to do it again, went straight back to business, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you know, when I first started, I didn't know how to price, you know, I'm like so many new guys that think price is the only thing that sells. So uh, I had an old change place. And of course, back then Walmart, that is when they really kind of started doing the, the old changes and they didn't do a lot of other things, but they did that. So I was trying to compete with them. Well, you, you know, you can't compete with, with uh, Walmart. And yeah. so that's the reason I hated it. Yeah. I just, I, you, I couldn't make any money doing it. So it just wasn't worth doing, but I learned through time. If you charge appropriately, you know, you can make money doing anything. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other interesting thing you said was basically when you got started in pressure washing, it was because you needed your own home cleaned. You went out, cleaned it, realized this is a problem people face and you offered as a service. Same thing with the products company. Um, you had a problem that you're facing you found a solution for it and then you went out and offered it to other people. And then same exact thing with the coaching. So it's just very interesting. I don't think a lot of people in the space realize, yes, they're offering a service, but what they're really doing is offering a solution to whatever problem the, the homeowner is facing. I um, mean, it sounds like a lot of your success is because you realize that, you know, throughout all of these endeavors. Yeah. And uh, you know, one thing that 
that I try to teach is that uh, you know you've got to you've got to want to fill that need, but you've got to have you've got to have a little heart in it. I mean, whenever I do something, I truly treat try to treat these people that's coming to my class or I'm cleaning their roof or whatever. You know, I've, I treat them literally like my family because that's you know I want them to be happy. I don't want them to like me when I'm done. So uh, so I'm not just trying. I'm I'm trying to help them at the end of the day, mm-hmm. uh, just like I would a family member. Exactly. I mean, a lot of people, they think short term, so they think I'll go out, do the job, collect the money, and that's the end of it. But in reality, if you build a good relationship with these people, I know like a lot of, you know, in our pressure washing business, we're friends with a lot of the guys we service. So we're going there year after year, building good relationships. They refer people to us. So that one short term job can really amount to so much more than that if you approach it properly and genuinely care about these people too. Yeah, definitely. And that's one thing I've, I guess I've learned about myself. Uh, I've always been pretty successful with, uh, with sales and with customers, you know, but uh, I've, and I've always in my mind thought I'm just wanting the money, but I've, I've realized as I've gotten older uh, that I, that's not all I want. I mean, I really, truly, I really, truly care when I'm dealing with them and I want them to be happy. I mean, obviously I want to be happy and I'd like to make the money, but at the end of the day, I just want both, both me and my customer to walk away happy and uh, glad we made the decision that we made, whether, you know, whether it's doing business together or not, you know, sometimes it's, it's not worth doing the business together, but obviously not since the time it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Provide the value and then the money will follow. If you're just going straight for the money, you're not really going to get anywhere, but if you're going out providing as much value as possible, the money's going to come. Well, you, yeah, you said that perfectly and that's, a, that's exactly right. And that's something that I was doing, but I couldn't put words to it. I didn't realize that's what I was doing. It took uh, it took a while for me to see that. So at, at a young age, you already seeing that you're you're already light years ahead of, of me, you know, than I was at your. Well, how old are you? Uh, I'm actually 23. 23, yeah. So you're light years ahead of me because I'm 48. So uh, so I'll just I'll just watch you grow past me. Well, I mean, hey, it's all subjective. Everyone, you know, they they progress at their own pace. I know plenty of guys years younger than me that are far, you know progressed past me but um yeah at the end of the day we're all on our own journey so it just That's right. That's right. being able to learn from yourself learn from other people in the industry there's the guys that I learned from that are even younger than me and something that I, I'm actually glad we we kind of touched on this is that a lot of people in this industry do not want to learn because they kind of have that ego where they're super knowledgeable they don't need to learn anything else um they, they don't want to learn from you know a younger guy like myself because of that that ego that they have but in reality, once you realize, you know, you're going to grow the fastest, progress the fastest once you open up and realize that, you know, if you only take one piece of information from that person, but it's something that you didn't know, that could completely change how you grow your business, how you make moves going forward. And, you know, just realize that there's knowledge out there that you don't have that you won't get unless you're open to the idea of coaching, mentoring, stuff like that. Everything will change for your business. So I was also curious when you got into coaching. Um, before then, did you have any coaches, mentors of yourself, or did you kind of do everything on your own? No, I've, I've always, uh, of course, my father's always been in business uh, on his own. So I've, I've always looked up to him and, and used his knowledge. Uh, and, and talking about learning from more pe- other people, that was the one thing that I used to tell people is, uh, you know, leaving things the same like so many older people do is is uh, is a downfall. You know, the, the one thing that he, that I, that I watched him do was that he, uh, there was always change, you know, he was always learning, you know, because there's always something new coming out. And a lot of times it is a young guy. So if you, if you have too much pride to learn from a young guy, then you're going to get passed up. So, I mean, like Twitter and, and, and all these, uh, all these different things that are come that, I mean, that's been out for a while now, but just all these different apps and different things. If you don't learn from some of the young people, you, you'll be so far behind, you won't have any business left. Uh, yeah. You'll start advertising in the newspaper. <laughs> you know, so, so, I mean, I had him and then through the years in our industry, we went to a lot of different events and uh, seminars uh, and stuff like that on sales and on uh, running a business. Uh, I actually only went to the, I mean, I went to the 12th grade, I graduated high school, but I didn't do any further schooling that way. But, uh, but I've been learning ever since the day I left school, as far as uh, hard knocks type of stuff and going to seminars and, and reading books. I've read a lot of books about business and, and different things. So uh, I've learned and adopt a lot of different ways uh, that way. But, uh, 
I don't know, and you probably haven't ever heard, there's a guy named Terry Greenhut. He's really popular in the automotive field. Mm-hmm. And uh, probably, and of course, this is going way back in the 80s, uh, he already had some of the knowledge that a lot of people don't learn or don't even know, you know in today's world. Matter of fact, he's, we still have some of his tapes and they're on VHS. Do you know what that is? Because you're pretty young. I do, actually, yeah. <laughs> it's so, uh, uh, but he taught about, you know, uh, selling yourself and, and uh, knowing your worth and, you know, a lot of those things that, that really a lot of guys are just now talking about, you know, that, that he's known for a long time. So there's a lot of that stuff that I learned, you know, as I went up. And, uh, and so I had a lot of different mentors through the time. Okay. Cool. I'm glad you touched on um, the educational side of things, um, because also like a mentorship aside, like there's so many resources out there nowadays, like there's YouTube, there's free videos, there's plenty of, you know, courses or coaches, um, there's books, like there's so many resources that you can use to, you know, learn more about the business, learn more about sales, about um, marketing, uh, every topic of the business, but a lot of guys just aren't taking advantage of that nowadays. So do you have any actionable advice that maybe someone who, you know, hasn't done any self-education is kind of lost in their business and where they could start to help push them in the right direction? You know, something that, uh, always comes back to my mind in the past is, uh, and this is definitely before your time, but you might know about it, but they're, they're, uh, probably in the late 90s, maybe early 2000s, but probably mainly late 90s, they had they had tons of courses about real estate, about how to buy real estate and flip it. I mean, there was just, mm-hmm. there was 9 million of them. Uh, every commercial was teaching you how to, you know, buy my book, buy this, do that. And uh, it was the number one thing that I fig- I found out about that is it doesn't really matter who you, you know, what industry you're in, it doesn't matter who you learn from. It doesn't matter how you learn. It's it's all about just getting off your behind and doing it. You know, uh, you can sell money selling popsicle sticks. You can make money selling popsicle sticks if you just get out on the corner and push popsicle sticks every day, all day, and have passion about it. And and you know, it's just you just got to get out and just do it. You know, as far as the educational part, like you said, there's. There's tons of outlets. You know, I do an in-class and I also have uh, some online stuff for sales marketing and, and roof cleaning. But uh, and obviously I love for somebody to, to pay me some money. But realistically, you, you can learn everything I learned for free. Uh, you just can't be lazy. You just got to you got to get online and you got to you got to set your mind to it and uh, and just study it until you're you know, you got to make it part of life. Yeah. Prime example is, 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 you know, I use my father a lot. He was obviously a big mentor of mine and uh, we used to be big into hunting and in the transmission industry, they had a, a, tra- a magazine called transmission digest. You know, it, it sounds funny to most people because well, I mean, it's a digest about transmissions, but uh, we would go hunting and he would be reading those in the deer stand, you know, because he was always wanting to be up and know what the new stuff was what was going on in the industry uh you know back then they didn't have facebook and and all these different out avenues or outlets and so uh you know you've got to live it if you want to be if you want to be successful you almost just i mean and i'm not saying don't talk to family and be with family because that's in my opinion uh you know i've learned the hard way that that's that is uh super important uh but uh you know, when you get up at eight o'clock on Monday morning, if you own your own business and you don't have a job, you need to treat your life like you have a job. You need to get up at eight o'clock, whether you have work or not, and either clean something or YouTube something or study something or clean something for free, or you need to just be an employee of your own, basically, and make yourself get up and go to work. Yeah, you couldn't have said it better. Um, it A lot of people start their own business thinking, I'm not going to do the nine to five, I'm going to have time freedom and do my own thing. Um, And then if if, like, if you truly want to be successful, get out of the nine to five, then you're going to have to do, you know, the the seven to seven, the the seven to 10, like you're going to have to work far more than you worked at a nine to five, it won't be forever. Obviously, you'll get to a point where you can automate parts of the business, um, hire people for parts and kind of see yourself out of the business. But in the beginning, like it's going to be a grind. It's going to be far more work than anything you've ever done. And you actually need to take action. So um, I, I'm glad you touched on that point too, because you could do all the training in the world, you know, have the best coaches, the best courses to watch all the videos in the world. 
But if you don't take action, all of that is useless. Well, there was a there was a great saying that I heard years ago, and it was uh, education without implementa- implementation is just entertainment. And that <laughs> yeah. really makes it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's a perfect <laughs> way to say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. So I want to sidestep a little bit and go into basically your approach at business at the moment, because I know right now, like you've had teams in the past, you've had a larger scale operations, but as of now, you decide you want to scale back the operation side, have yourself and one employee in the business. So I'm curious why you decide to make that decision and what you would say the pros and cons of either option would be. So I'm 48 years old now. And so I, uh, I tend to catch myself telling people don't grow, uh, don't, you know, don't take that big risk because it didn't work for me. But I realize uh, I've tried to realize that I don't need to I don't need to push that on people for for a few different reasons. One reason is that uh, just because it didn't work for me don't mean it won't work for them. Uh, you know, I'm pretty uh, all in type of a guy, uh, but obviously I wasn't all in enough <laughs> to make that work. Uh, part of my problem was is I uh, I didn't hire the right people, so that was one of my issues. Uh, but uh, at this point in my life, you know, I've done all those things, and as a matter of fact, you know, I bring my father up a lot. He actually had a few locations in auto repair years ago, and but back then they didn't have cameras, they didn't have cell phones, they didn't have uh, internet, they didn't have any of these things, you know, that we have the, today. So I thought, well you know, it, I can make it work. You know, I have, I have uh, online repair order programs where I can see what cars are sitting in the lot. I can look on the camera and see what, I mean, I, I could, I could visually see everything that's going on there. So I thought I could do it <clears throat> and, and, and people can do it, but uh, there's way more people that fail at trying to grow than actually do grow. Uh, and the, and the reason is a couple, there's a few different reasons. One, it's just super stressful. Uh, and just because someone looks successful doesn't mean they are. Uh, I, myself and I know others that's had multiple locations uh, as far as uh, brick and mortar stores. But then I've also known lots of guys in the pressure washing industry or AC repair industry, different ones that had different trucks that they look like they're doing great. Uh, but they have a they have a large uh, money a turnover of money, but there's not a whole lot left for them. Because trying to grow, you know, going from, for instance, if, if I wanted to get off my truck and not work every day, uh, I would have to, I would, it would take three trucks worth of revenue to be able to, for me to profit what I profit now. Because as an owner, you're always going to do more work. You're always going to make your customer more happy. Uh, and so... And you're, all, you're always going to get things done quicker. So um, to, to duplicate that is just very difficult. Of course, like I said, I learned the hard way that you got to hire good people. Uh, but at this time in my life, I would rather work myself and, and, I'm, and make really good money and be in control. And, and obviously, if something was to happen, if I was to fall, hurt myself or get sick or whatever, uh, that's a that's a situation a person has to be prepared for fortunately i'm older and i do have money saved up and i have uh i can take care of myself if something like that did uh so as a younger person it's it's a double-edged sword but uh but i just want people to know that having a a a large business does not mean it doesn't it doesn't automatically equal more money It, it, it equals more more gross sales but it doesn't equal more profits uh prime example when i had five location auto repair business i made more money with one than i did with five because once you have five then you have to have people that are non-money generators like uh secretaries extra secretaries bookkeepers uh you know a corporate office type of a staff that that aren't you know they're needed but they're not income generators they're just Mm -hmm. trying you just need that to keep the whole thing together uh and so those profits start getting split up a lot more the you know when you grow now once you get to say 10 stores you know i was involved in a a tire business that had we had 15 stores by the time it was said and done and you know once you get bigger then it's it's easier to overcome some of those things uh but the stress just gets bigger with that too i mean we've had uh, in the auto repair business and the tire business uh for example there's been mornings that i would wake up 
and uh, assistant managers or mechanics out in the shop would call, you know, we opened at eight o'clock. They would call me at nine o'clock and say, hey, the manager's not here so that we can't open the doors. <laughs> so, you know, those are stressful situations to wake up to. And so uh, that's the reason I don't like it. It doesn't, it's, there's, there's so many things that are just difficult and stressful that uh, in my, at my age, I don't want to deal with. Now, as a young person, uh, I dealt with it way better than I would now. Uh, I mean, at this point, I just, I just want to fire everybody, you know, <laughs> but you can't do that. So, yeah. uh, so that's just one of those things that in, in my time in life, I would rather just have me so that I'm, I'm totally in control. Uh, it, like I mentioned on a post, I posted on Facebook the other day, there's times that I go with friends that have, you know, multiple locations or multiple trucks. And, uh, you know, when I go on a trip with them, obviously my business is shut down because I'm gone. So I get to really enjoy myself with these guys, their phone's not stopping. So you're, you know, you literally have no time on your own because 24 seven, your phone's ringing with some kind of a problem. So you've got to be the person that can handle that, that can take that. And at my time in my life, I'm just not, I'm not, uh, I'm not willing to give that much of my life up. I did it for a lot of years and, and I can't say that it was all negative because I learned a lot and, um, uh, and I grew from it. Uh, and like I said, I'm not, I hate to tell somebody not to do it because there's so many people that do and they, they make a fortune, but, uh, but there's, like I said, there's way more that there's way more that don't. Are you familiar with mattress Mac? No, I don't think I am. So he's, uh, he just, he, you might've seen him on the news. If you watch the news lately, he's mm -hmm. a furniture salesman in Houston, Texas. And he, uh, he actually just bet, he, he, he does it almost every year, but he bets that if the Astros win the, uh, what is it in baseball? If they win the World Series. Okay. <laughs> if the Astros win the World Series, you tell them a big sports fan. If the Astros win the then, then everybody that year that has bought furniture, he refunds them their money. So he just done a big bet and won like $100 million, but not a hundred million, 10 million. I don't remember. It was a lot, but my mm -hmm. point being that he, he, he has a book out and I read it and he done, he done the same thing I did. He, he opened up multiple gyms and, and you get so excited about having more gyms and more stores and makes you feel good, but pumps you up. Uh, and anyway, he ended up going broke. And so now he's got one of the largest furniture stores in the country and he's, he actually just opened up a second location, but he'd been in his business for 30 years now, so or 40 years. So, uh, but he said the same thing. If you have one business and you focus on it and you make it run right, you can make more profit than you can, you know, spreading out. Yeah, absolutely. And keep in mind for anybody watching, this is different for everybody, depending on, you know, your goals, what you're trying to achieve out of life and the business. So for some people, they like dealing with the stress. They love having a team under them and, you know, scaling up the team and, and getting as large of a revenue as you can might be the goal. And that's fine. But for the, some people, they want to live stress-free, um, have a bit more freedom, not deal with the headaches that come with that type of territory uh, and still be able to make multiple six figures because it's definitely possible to be making that kind of money with just yourself or just one other guy um, and obviously make it much less stressful. So it, it's interesting to hear your story and how like you've been able to do that. I guess I want to know how you would rate your quality of life when you're running this high stress businesses compared to now when things are obviously much less stressful? Well, uh, you know, first off, just to say, you know, I, I was fortunate when I first uh, started. I mean, I was running uh, my father's business uh, at 19. And so I, I did work out in the shop in auto repair, but I moved up to the office relatively quick. And so my point being is, is I, uh, I didn't, I was the boss pretty quickly, you know, so I didn't have to work out in the field a whole lot uh, in the beginning. And so my life is almost, I'm almost working it backwards. You know, lots of people, they start out working, you know, in the shop or, uh, you know, just managing the stores or, or whatever. And so, and then they work through life and it, and they're, when they get my age, they don't have to work you know, out in the shop, they're mainly using their, their head to work because when they were younger, they had to use their back, you know, older, they're using their head. Mm -hmm. So with me, it was almost reversed. So I'm, 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 I'm kind of a, a unicorn in that way compared to most people. I'm not, 
I started out in the office and didn't work. And now I actually work in the field. So uh, I don't know if I can appreciate it more because I was in that situation. Uh, and, and I'm getting to what your question is, you know, my, you know, I, I've been really fortunate to not have to, you know, my dad's always said, use your mind, not your back, you know, and that's whether they say it or not, that's a lot of people's uh, theory these days, uh, which is a good theory uh, or a way of life. But I, uh, I done that so long that I actually, at this part of my life, I actually enjoy doing the work, Uh, you know, being, uh, being the head of a company, you know, you run it, and you see things happen, I guess, day to day and think and money come in, but you don't really get a feeling of accomplishment or I didn't. And so uh, now when I clean a big building or a roof or whatever, uh, I really get a great feeling of accomplishment by doing it. So it, it, it that it, I, it's a, to me, it's a better quality of life in that way. Uh, but uh as far as quality, just regular quality of life, it's, it's a thousand times better now. Uh, but, but of course, it's, it's, uh, I'm trying to think of the word for it. It's, it's kind of uh, relative because, you know, if I was running my own company and working every day in it, whenever I was in my twenties, I might not have the, the financial situation. So I, so instead of stressing over employees, I might be stressing over, am I going to sell this job? So it might be a little different, you know, now I'm not stressing over if I sell the job or not. So if I, if I lose the job, I will, first off, I don't like losing jobs. I'm very competitive. And so, but if I do lose it on my terms is the way I like to say it, then it does, you know, it's not a big deal because I don't, I didn't need that job to survive. So uh, my perspective is going to be just a little bit, uh, a little bit different, but uh, my quality of life right now is 10 times what it ever was in the past uh, for a few different reasons. One, I don't have the stress. I don't have the employees. Employees, when you add that to any business, it's, it gets complicated uh, for a few different reasons. Uh, when you have employees, if you're busy, they're making you money. If you're not busy, they're costing you money. And so, you know, for instance, when I had the five location auto repair business, if we didn't have any customers for in any store, let's just, you know, just say it never was that bad but let's just say we had no customers in our stores for a week at five locations you know if you've got five employees at each location that's 25 employees and then plus the office staff that i have that's that needs it that needs their paycheck so it can easily be a hundred grand or whatever it may be uh about a hundred grand 20 grand whatever it is uh that uh gotta come from somewhere you know with this business uh, with just one employee, it doesn't take much to keep things rolling. So if I'm not busy, I don't, it's, it doesn't bother me. If I had a, you know, a brick and mortar location or I've had a bunch of trucks, then you have to, you have to hustle hard because you have to keep everybody busy and make, you know, really forget your paycheck. You got to make sure you make everybody else's to be able to keep the place afloat. So that's what ends up causing people to, to, uh, you know, charge less and start giving uh, less quality of work because now they're not, they're not, they're not trying to make a profit. They're just trying to survive a lot of times, you know, when times are good, it's not a big deal. You know, they're, they're making money, but when times are slow, then that's when it, that's when you suffer. But, uh, but again, quality of life for me these days, it's, it's a thousand times better. I mean, I, I work basically when I want to work, what I typically do is I try to schedule everything for around three days a week. Obviously in the spring, uh, sometimes we work five days a week just because it's our busy time, mm-hmm. uh, but typically work three days a week and uh, we leave uh, my home, which is, I have a shop at home. We leave my sh- home shop at, uh, at eight o'clock in the morning. We usually get home around four o'clock in the evening. And uh, I mean, like last year, I can't remember exactly the numbers with, all my companies, but I just shared it the other day. Uh, I think it was, it was close to 400 that I did this year. And with the, the overhead that I have, I mean, it's, it's probably 60% of that's profit. So, I mean, it's, in my opinion, I'm living the best, my best life. That's great. Um, One of the questions I was actually going to dive into was regarding, you know, your, your business's revenue and the profit margins. And one of the reasons why I said, you're one of the most transparent, no bullshit dudes in the industry. Recently, I saw on Facebook, like you posted your pressure washing businesses revenue or roof washing 
the products, businesses, revenue, you kind of broke all of that down, which, you know, there's very little people in the industry where that would actually be that transparent and open. So that was awesome to see. Um, and you also explained that you were kind of not a one-man show, but very small scale team. So if you could do it with just two guys, then that shows other people that are scared that, you know, they're not gonna be able to do that much revenue because they're a one-man show or, you know, they're not capable of finding the right people. Maybe you don't need more people, you just need to understand the business model better. So um, it, it was awesome to see that. And I was also curious, I was going to ask about the profit margin and what you would say, like, what are your biz biggest expenses being that you don't have the big team, the big operations, you're able to cut back on expenses a bit more. I was curious as to your profit margin. So you're saying you're at about 60%. I guess, what does that 40% mostly consist of? And, and it really, it's probably a little more than 60. That's just a safe number. I mean, the only cost, you know, everything... All of my equipment, I started out with, uh, because when I first started this business, I was, that's whenever I was pretty much, you know, I had a shop. I wasn't completely broke, but I definitely was, I was, I was right there at it. Um, I couldn't miss a paycheck kind of a situation. But um, so when I first started, I started out with a 12 volt system. And honestly, I wasn't even planning on pressure washing. I was just planning on doing roof cleaning and really didn't even put those two things together which is weird but I just didn't uh because roof cleaning was kind of a and it still is nobody understands it I, I love when people ask me what do you do for a living I'm like I clean roofs and they're like oh yeah yeah and you can tell they have no idea what I'm talking yeah. about uh so now I try to just say exterior cleaner but uh so I say it's uh it's like I said it's probably a little more because uh Really, the only in my point to all that was when I started, I started out small as with a 12 volt and I just started adding two as I went. So I have, and since I've been in this industry, every piece of equipment I've ever owned has been paid for, uh, including my trucks paid for. So uh, the only cost that I really have is, you know, taxes, insurance, uh, that one employee, and I only pay that employee when we work, mm -hmm. uh, and then um, fuel. And bleach and then you know obviously the typical uh oil changes and just the normal stuff like that so uh my two biggest things really is fuel and bleach uh all the rest of the things like i said my employee i only pay him uh three days a week because he's uh and this is something i recommend to anybody that's that's needing employees if you can find especially if you're new uh if you can find a retired guy uh, those my last few employees have been retired because they are they don't really need the money they don't stay on their phone. They want to work because they're bored to death. They want to get out of their house. <laughs> and so you can pay them uh, a little bit of nothing most of the time and get, you know, they're older. Like the guy that I work with, he's 75. Uh, so, you know, he, wow. he gets here, he, yeah, he gets here before, before I'm ready. I mean, he's like, you know, are you ready or what? You know, <laughs> of course I'm the type of guy. I'm always early anyway, but uh, he's early, early and uh, he never misses. And, uh, and like I said, you don't have to pay him every day. Uh, and so that's been a, that is, that has been a, 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 a great asset to have is by working those guys so that if I'm literally, if I have no work, I mean, it's not costing me anything. I mean, I could go a week without work and obviously I, I don't want to, I want to make money, but at least yeah. it's not costing me. And that's where I've learned. That's a major, that's a major, uh, point in business is to, to be able to have no cost, whether you're busy or, you know, if you're not busy, because if not, it don't matter how much money you make, if it just bleeds it back down. And yeah. that's what I, so, but on the profit margins, that's, uh, that's where I am on, uh, I would, so it's, I say 60 just for a safe number, but really it's a little bit better than that. Uh, on the, uh, on Roof King products, it's, it's a little different because there's so much, there's so many parts and, and things involved in that. So uh, it's more of like 30% uh, profit mar margin over there. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's just a different, uh, different ball just game. business model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, first off, 60% is amazing for this industry. You know, almost. Oh yeah. Well, any industry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I first started, when I first first started, you know, like I said, I had this other business, I had a manager, so I didn't have to work there every day. So I advertised this and I would do it. Well, you know, the typical roof that I do is is from 800 to 1400 bucks. And so, you know, and and we've got our systems down to to I mean, when we get out of the truck, we don't even talk. I mean, we get out and we just go to work. We don't you know, it's it's seamless 
especially with the way I've got my equipment and all. I mean, literally, uh, the typical roof that we clean is less than an hour. And so uh, I, I still remember in the beginning thinking, I mean, I don't know if I could sell drugs and make the money that I make. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's, I mean, it's just, it's a great industry. Yeah. Honestly, it's, it's such a good business model. I, I think something people don't realize is pricing strategy has a big uh, part to play with it because they're going for those little jobs, the little fish, and you're going to have to do a ton of jobs just to make what you might make in like a few hours on a, a $3,000 job. They might need to work 10 jobs to get the same amount. So obviously to each their own, if they want to bang out, you know, five jobs a day, very small jobs, make 1500 a day, like by all means, they're more than welcome to do that. But eventually you kind of re realize, um, you know, I could do take on less customers, increase the average ticket that we're doing, increase profit margins to make the same amount, if not more, but you know, you're, you're working much less. So then in reality, you, you can increase revenue tremendously by not doing anything other than just switching up your pricing. Yeah. You know, uh, it's funny you say that, you know, the Terry Green guy I was telling you about earlier uh, mm -hmm. in the eight, he told, he told my father at one of their seminars, he was like, you know, go home and double your prices. And mm -hmm. of course, anybody's going to say, I mean, that's dumb. I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> and he <laughs> said, he said, I'm telling you to do it. He said, because you're going to lose half your customers but you're going to make the same money at the end of the day and look at all that free time you're going to have. So you can either advertise or go fishing, but you're going to make the same profit. And so we were like, you know, that just, that's crazy, but we tried it and it worked. And so yeah. I teach, teach that a lot. I mean, uh, the pricing is the one, it's, it's the number one thing. I mean, uh, I've been against a lot of guys on a roof that I'll do for, uh, 40 or 45 cents a foot that other guys are doing it for 10 and 20. And I'm like, you're just, I mean, it's, if I can sell them for 40 and 45, you can too. You know, I mean, there's nothing special about me, especially uh, for, for instance, how long have you been in the industry? Have you been in the industry very long? About two and a half, three years. So, uh, so you've been there long enough to understand the business, but I mean, I've, I've literally, I've, I've, uh, I've competed, I've competed with guys that's been in the industry for three or four months on, you know, so a customer would call me and call them wanting to get their roof cleaned. The customer has no idea the difference between me and him. So, you know, you try, you know, I see a lot of people say, well, I just started, so I'm going to charge less until I get my, you know, the ball rolling. Well, the problem is if you start low, that ball that you've got rolling is going to start low, you know, yeah. you you got to start it up to where if you make a job, you actually make a profit, you know, because if not, you, if you do a small a job and don't make enough profit, then you end up, it's kind of a snowball effect that you're having to make more jobs with less profit. And then you're, you're having to give jobs away. So if you just start out making, you know, charging appropriately, then it doesn't matter if you get as many jobs, at least when you do a job, you make money. And that's one reason, are you in, do you know of, or are you in my, uh, Pressure Washington Cowboys pricing group. I think I am. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when I started that group, man, I mean, so many people made fun of me telling me you can't do that. And, uh, and, and, you know, that's price fixing and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I mean, I'm not price fixing. I'm just giving an example and people can charge what they want. Um, but you know, when I have a, whether I was in the auto repair industry or any industry that I've ever been in, if I went, you know, whatever town I might be in, I always contacted my competition and told them what I was charging. Uh, hopefully they would tell me what they were charging, but really I didn't care as much what they were charging, but I wanted them to know, for instance, if I was going to, if I'm going to clean a roof and I'm going to charge a thousand dollars, I don't care if you bid 900 or 950 because I can a lot of times oversell you uh, or at least I can try so that it, whether I do or not, at least, you know, I don't look like a criminal and he don't look like an idiot because there's times that I've bid roofs for a thousand bucks and somebody else bid it for 300. Well, a lot of times they won't get it because the customer thinks this guy obviously don't know what he's doing. <laughs> uh, and then I'm too high. So they'll end up picking somebody in the middle. Uh, but I always want my competition to know what I'm charging. So that way, a lot of times it helps them get their pricing up and then it just helps the industry as a whole. Yeah, absolutely.
And you, know, you, you definitely need to have your sales process down. I mean, you have your pricing strategy down. You need to be good at sales. So all of that needs to be taken care of. But as long as you know what you're doing, if you just literally go out, double your prices, obviously you're going to lose some customers that will always go with the cheapest option. But like you said, you're still going to make the same or more money from it. And something interesting is that psychologically people will be attracted to that higher price point because they'll see your three, four times um, that the other uh, competitor, they're probably thinking, wow, this, this is the price. They must provide so much value that it's worth the price and it's justifiable. Yeah, we cleaned uh, we cleaned a hospital in, in Florida and everybody there, you know, a lot of Florida is, is kind of known for a cheaper, you know, it's hard to charge more over there. And, uh, but uh, of course, Texas is getting that away as well because there's just so many washers. But in yeah. Florida, we bid it, uh, we bid a, a job for, sixty thousand dollars the the next bid that was close to ours was twenty eight thousand dollars and they said you know these guys obviously don't know what they're doing <laughs> so we yeah. ended up getting the job just because we were higher priced and we exactly. priced it where you know if we're going to go to florida we're going to get paid for it you know mm -hmm. and so i mean but obviously we got the job ended up we done two jobs for this for this hospital, and so the total ticket was uh, like 150 grand altogether, and uh, and these other guys would have, I mean, they would have had pennies, and yeah, it just that. It, that kind of stuff just don't make sense to me. And I try to educate people on that, but you know it's scary because if you and I tell people that all the time, if you you know you if you're a small company or if you're new and you you, you need to make the money, then it's hard to charge a higher price because you're nervous and you're, cause you need that money for bills this month. Yeah. Uh, but that's, I actually uh, recommend being negotiable, which lots of guys say don't negotiate because it makes you look bad, which, and I agree if you don't do it in the proper way, but uh, by being able to negotiate, it gives you the chance of getting the top dollar jobs and, and some of them that's lower. So for example, if, if somebody calls and wants, a uh, the roof clean. I give them. I tell them it's a thousand dollars. So it's uh, you know if they don't if, if I don't sell the job, then you know I always try to find out why. So I'll, I'll message them the next day and check up. If and, and sometimes it's you know I'm too high. Sometimes it's I got to talk to the wife. You know the story and yeah. uh, whatever. Uh, but if it's the price, then I always let them know. Hey, you know what are you looking to spend? Because a lot of times it's fifty bucks. It's not even you know it's surprisingly. Yeah. Sometimes. More than that, but they don't want to say it, but still they'll say 50 so or 100. But sometimes, you know, what I'll do is I'll ask them and let them just tell me. And sometimes, you know, if it's close enough, I can negotiate with them. But I just always explain to them, you know, the only way that I can do that is if I take something away. So obviously I, we can't take anything away, away from the roof. But what we can do is if you'll let me put a sign in the yard, uh, if you'll go on Facebook and post before and after pictures, then I can write that that loss that I'm having, I can write that off as advertising. And that way uh, I've got to show it somehow. I can't just lose that money, you know? So that way they realize that you're not just some Joe Blow, you actually have a business running and uh, you weren't just trying to take advantage of them in the first place. <laughs> you know, you have a yeah. reason why you can lower it. And I mean, you know, honestly, I'm, re I'm totally willing to lose 50 or hundred bucks to have this other guy to have this customer pushing you on Facebook and telling people how great you are, you know? So it's, it's really, it's a win-win. Yeah. 100%. I mean, eventually you'll reach a point in your business where you probably don't really want to negotiate. You have you know enough customers to keep you busy. So you don't need every single customer. Not everyone's your customer, but in the earlier stages, you 100% should be negotiating if it comes to that, because you're going to miss out on a lot of jobs that you would, would have otherwise closed. You're going to miss out on a lot of before and after pictures, um, Google reviews, uh, yard sign placements, like a ton of stuff like that, where, you know, if you play it right, if, if you understand sales tactics, you actually did sales training, then you can play it off and still look very professional. And like you said, like you actually know what you're doing and you're not just, you know, throwing prices, trying to get them to do anything, but you actually have a solidified process where, you know, you know what, I'll lower the price X amount, but in exchange, if you don't mind, we would like a Google review or a yard sign placement or something out of it. So now it's an yeah. equal value trade. That's right. Yeah. It, it, and it, it makes you not seem slimy like a lot of guys, but mm -hmm. especially for the guys that make, need to make a living, uh, it, it kind of, uh, it, it helps in that way. So instead of just being the low priced guy, I, I would rather be a negotiator than the low price guy, <laughs> you know, because the negotiator is going to get high tickets and low tickets. 
the yeah. low price guy is get all low tickets. So uh, that's just a, an easier way for a, a new guy to survive is the way I look at it. Yeah, exactly. So another big thing that, I, that I'm an advocate of is, is on the pricing. Of course, if, if you're in a state that has to charge tax, then uh, then usually it will come out, you know, your pricing will come out in odd numbers. Uh, but for, for states that they don't have to charge tax, or if they're a person that's supposed to be charging tax but not charging tax, which is a lot of people in our industry, uh, yeah. I recommend, you know, all the pricing always be odd numbers uh, for a couple of reasons. For example, you know, if, if somebody tells me, uh, like today, I actually, on the top of my, the cab of my truck, I had, I've had bleach tripping, so it's made it kind of rust a little bit. And mm-hmm. so I got that prepared, and then I got a, I got it wrapped today to, to keep that chemical from being on the on the metal. <clears throat> so he gave me a price of 400 So I know when he told me 400 that that was just a number that he just pulled straight out of the air. So I knew right off the bat that's a negotiable number. So I ended up getting it for 350 <laughs> So, mm-hmm. But if you tell somebody it's going to be $403.78, that number doesn't sound made up that number, yeah. whether you make it up or not, it doesn't sound like it. And so it's going to be way harder for somebody to negotiate with that number than it would just 400. Yeah. So, uh, that's a, a, is a great piece of information that I've, that I've, uh, I've used and, and it really works. Yeah. Cause the customer's assuming you'd have some type of formula to get to that number. Whereas like, if you just throw out a flat number, like 400, then they're assuming you just put something together and you know, it's negotiable. So yeah, you just threw you just threw it out there, which you did, you know what yeah. I mean? That's the day nine times out of 10, that is what you did. So yeah, exactly. And something you also mentioned, which, which I think it's a great idea for those guys that are scared to charge more and are having trouble closing is worst case scenario. Let's say you increase your prices and you're not able to close someone then you can negotiate down. Whereas if you already start at that low point, there's really no negotiating you can do at that point. It's either yes or no. It's either yes or no. It's either, yeah, you're exa- yeah, exactly right. Awesome. Well, I, I know I already took up a lot of your time, so I, I don't want to take too much of your night. I guess, is there anywhere people can find you online, your YouTube channel or your website? Yeah, uh, my uh, roofkingproducts.com is my website for my equipment. Uh, Roman Roof Cleaning is the name of my company, but... Uh, I, and I think my YouTube channel, I think it still is Roman Roof Cleaning. Uh, I need to actually change that because I really don't want my roof cleaning customers on that page. But, yeah. uh, but my YouTube is, I think it is Roman Roof Cleaning. So, uh, but yeah, more than welcome to check out some of my videos. I don't have a ton, but, uh, but I'm working on them every day. So uh, trying to get more content out there. But uh, I'll be glad to, if there's anybody out there that's new or struggling, I'm more than glad to help. Just shoot, you know, the best way to contact me is through messenger. Uh, you can message me that way I can get, to, and it's just Gerald best. Uh, but, uh, that way I can have time to get back to you and respond, you know, in a timely manner. That way I don't have to stop what I'm doing, answer the phone, all that sort of thing. So, uh, but yeah, I appreciate you having me on and, uh, and I enjoyed the talk. Again, thank you so much. Uh, it was great having you on. All right, brother. Thank you.